I didn't recording? press record yet. No, because I couldn't. You had to oh. make me a host. But I think it says, no, it says I'm recording. I guess I'm recording. And I'm recording, recording. big time, so it's fine. Hello. <laughs> it wouldn't be the Muscle Science for Women podcast without a couple technical difficulties right off the top. Hey, this guys. Like hello, intro. world. Our intro is this like, is are you world. recording? Are you recording? Are you recording? What's happening? What day is it? Who am I? Who are you? Anyway, welcome, friends. Muscle Science for Women podcast. We it's been a while, so cheers. Look at cheers. me trying to drink water. water. I was okay? gonna say, trying my best. Um, it's been a while. We have a lot to catch up on, and I appreciate everybody who has been patient and listening to the amazing re-released episodes that we put out. That are the good ones that we really wanted people to hear again. But thank you for your patience. We're back. I had to move and do some things, and it's been a time. But now we're rocking and rolling back with some fresh content for you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm excited. It's been too long. Yeah. So I much like to talk about so much to catch up. Yeah. So much to catch up on. I where do you kind of start? don't even know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where to start. I mean, I guess we could start with just because it's really like at the top of my mind or the bottom of my butt right now, but I'm really sore oh. from doing a glute workout and I wanted to shout out. How's that for a segue? I wanted oh. to shout out our grow your glutes workshop, because I have really been like, since we put that together, I've been really, um, more motivated to do like lower body and glute workouts than I normally am. I normally just, you know, it's like upper body is kind of my pet project. And I've just been like, no, I'm going to like, and I think also because I was so busy and with moving and stuff that I was really just trying to like, when I could get into the gym, I wanted to get the most bang for my buck, like Mm -hmm. bigger body parts and like work on the bigger muscles and like stuff. That's really just going to like I don't know, be more effective. And, uh, my new favorite lower body glute hamstring exercise is a single leg Romanian deadlift, but the one where you are like holding on, you know, for like a little bit of hand supported. And again, this is all like, I'm saying it to you. Like, you're like, obviously I know the hello, but for other people who may not be as well versed in all the different variations of like single leg, Romanian deadlifts, hand supported, not this and that. The reason why I really like this one, because I tend to, as anybody who's listened to this podcast know, I tend to like, you know, the more basic, the more simple, the more like OG classic moves. Like if you tell me I have to do any extra thing, I don't want to do it. It's like, just give me a barbell and like, just don't tell me anything else. But the reason why this one is good, because normally when I do Romanian, even single leg, I do it without a support, right? So there's a lot more balance and stability that's going into that movement, right? Which is fine. And if that's what you want to do, but you probably can't go as heavy and you probably can't maximize the muscle contraction in in the exact area, the glutes that you're trying to do, because you're also like, just trying to stay upright and like do it properly. Mm -hmm. And if you do this right with the hand support, you're not ripping onto it for dear life. You're not like, if you're not taking a ton of the weight or the the pressure off necessarily, it's just adding some stability so that you, or in this case, I can really focus on the muscle contraction in my glutes and hamstrings. Um, I still have not like completely gone over to your side where I'm using like straps. So I can use like a really heavy weight. Like I'm pretty much maxing out at like 55 pound dumbbells. Cause after that, it just gets too hard to like grab like grip onto for like Mm -hmm. high reps, but that's plenty weight, honestly, for me at this point to get like a good feeling in my glutes from this exercise. And I just, I, I just love when I do an exercise that I is either new or haven't done in a while. And I'm like, damn, that's effective. Like it is just doing exactly what I want it to do because, and I know, and I'm, I think, I think we speak to a lot of women about this issue, especially with posterior chain stuff and glute stuff we try so hard and sometimes we're just finding it ineffective because we're not able to turn on the muscles we want to turn on. It's, it's very common to have problems like really turning on the, a lot of the muscles along the posterior chain, glutes, hamstrings, Mm -hmm. all of these things. And so when you find one that you're like, yep, I just, I feel that like perfectly. And I feel it the next day, which is today. And (laughs) it's just very effective. I really like it. Um, you know, maybe I'll probably, I guess, pull out the straps from wherever they're. Okay. So that's what I was going to say. I was like, can I challenge you to something for next week? Okay. All right. Like, I want to see if like, cause you're obviously, and I hope so you're tracking your weights and your reps, right? How many you're doing? Okay. Yeah. Sure. As in like sarcastically (laughs) sure. Like, sure. Um, as in Yes, I am. 
<laughs> okay. Can you remember how much weight and reps you did yesterday? Yes. yes how many yes, sets? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go write that down after yeah. we stop recording. Sure. And then next week, I'm just curious if I want to see how many more reps you get by using the straps with the same weight, with the same weight. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Or you can, yep. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Again, like we've, we've moved on from this argument. I believe they're both good. They're both good and they're both effective. And you should really be doing both things. You should be, if you're trying to maximize your strength, you should really be using straps and not using straps. You should be doing it all. Um, Mm -hmm. but at the time, you know, I, I didn't have them and I was like, let's do a heavyweight. And I did the, you know what else I did at the end as my finisher, as I did those, um, like the heavy dumbbell pulses with the really Mm -hmm. heavy, dumbbell, which is just, again, so much fun because you can use such a heavy dumbbell, which is always, it's just fun to like pull like a 85 pound dumbbell off the rack. Like, cause what else are you going to use that for? Right. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to, again, shamelessly plug our program, which is so good, so affordable. Mm -hmm. Some might say ridiculously affordable and it just offers so many options and so many things. I've just been having fun, like mixing and matching and playing. And that was the genius of your programming really with how you're able to, as a person who's purchasing this program, like mix and match and play with like multiple combinations of still thoughtfully programmed exercises that are going to get you a good workout, but you still have like the freedom to be like, I don't really feel like doing that thing. So I'm going to do this thing instead. It still works, you know? So anyway, I was telling you offline, like the ladies in my flex fam, we have programming for the flex fam, but a bunch of them have gone and purchased the grow your glutes program because it is like an addition to your current programming. So we have like a specialization day, or we have finishers Mm -hmm. that you can add on to your current programming. Um, and they're loving it. And I think it's just like the, just the education that you get from that 90 minute lecture that we gave, like we've had, do you want, maybe this is a good time. Do you want, there was like a few reviews that we got or some feedback. We asked some of the ladies who came to the live, um, if they had any feedback and maybe we can just Where share are those. Those. I don't, I don't have, I don't think they're in our email. Oh. Are they? Yeah. I don't have um, them. Okay. I think I can pull. And for anybody listening, um, if you want, <laughs> if you're like, what are they talking about? Where do I find this? Um, we'll have a link in the description. Um, or I have it on, uh, the page on my website. So just rgfit.com backslash glutes. And that yes. will give you all the information. Um, and all of the, all that stuff. So I actually do have the review. So I, which let's see. They were all good. I mean, nobody yeah. reviewed, like sent it back and was like, this thing sucked and Ooh. wasn't good. So let me read, I'll just read real quick. Shanna's review. Yeah. She took the muscle science for one program. I believe she was like one of the first iterations. So that was like maybe two years ago. Um, and she came back and said, She said the glute class was amazing with like three exclamation points. She said, I've been lifting for 20 years and I learned so much about the glute muscles. I never knew. I started out doing the booty band workouts years back to try to work my glutes more. And it never helped, even though I quote unquote felt the burn. Mm. I also have two herniated discs and I've had to go to PT for it a few times. And she mentioned that when we talked about the one-sided unilateral and went through all of that, Um, it has really helped her just within the few weeks that she's been doing it. Um, and she said, I've been doing your MSW program since you opened it and has changed how I work out a hundred percent. Lastly, she said the glute class was definitely worth it. And I've dropped lots of pointless movements. I was trying to get in for the extra pump. She said, your guys' courses could and should be counted for college credits when getting a PT type degree. I look forward to the chance to work with you guys. (laughs) Damn right, Shanna. Yeah. You are the best. Thank you for that. And we agree completely. We, agree. <laughs> we yes. wholeheartedly agree. Um, that's amazing. Cool. So yeah, I mean, there's really no reason not to take the course moving on. Um, I think another good segue, just because we put out like, uh, you know, do you guys have any questions for us? And I actually got quite a few questions about my home, my growing home gym, because now I've got, mm. I'm like building out this garage gym which you will get to enjoy when you come and visit. Um, but basically it's exciting because for a couple of reasons, one, like I'm going to be going to a real gym less because I live further away from the gym. Like I am, I used to be like a five minute walk from a gym. Now Mm -hmm. I'm like a full drive, which means I, I am still going to get to a gym, but it just won't be as often. So I'm going to have to like reprioritize and like figure out how to make the home gym be 
more appealing, honestly, because I'm somebody who just like prefers to go to a gym. Um, in my old house, we had a home gym in like a room in our home and it was small, but like it got, it got the job done when you had like no other choice and during the pandemic and stuff, but I just didn't feel the same kind of like motivation. So I'm trying to like switch my thinking here. Like I'm in like this beautiful place, like where, you know, there's water, I'm on a lake so I can swim and I can paddleboard and I can do all that stuff. I've got like a big hill in front of my house so I can do all kinds of sprints. Like that's going to be great. And then I've got this garage gym. So we're looking at kind of like building it out. Um, and I'm well, I, I welcome any suggestions, but a couple of people were asking me like, tell me more about what's in your gym, why you picked it, what you have on the go. So I'll just kind of briefly mm -hmm. talk about what's in there now. And then, uh, Rachel, if you have any recommendations for me. Um, so basically right now we've got the sauna. I ha I've had a like small infrared sauna for like 10 years that I really like. I, again, I'm not going to like tout all the like life-changing, um, results you could get from a sauna. I just know that like, it's a good place to kind of unwind and relax and maybe have some chill time. I have not really been using it much because again, I was pregnant, not going to do it then postpartum. I was breastfeeding. I'm like, I'm dehydrated enough. I don't need to sit in this thing and sweat, but I'm looking forward to like getting back into that as like maybe like a nightly. And I, I believe in some of the like sort of detoxification benefits of like sweating, right? Like non-exercise related sweating. Um, so anyway, I have a sauna. I think that's great. I'll probably use that a couple times a week. I've got, uh, an assault bike, um, which everybody knows is horrible Death and amazing. Bike. So great. Whoever um, named it assault, if it, whether it's the company or whatever, it's a bit like aggressive, but I'm like, it's, it is like, it, it, it really is, is assaulty. <laughs> like if accurate. you do it right, if you do yeah. it right, it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love, I love a cardio machine that like you could literally get on for like one minute and then be like, I'm done. That was good. So I'm dead. Love it's that. Fun. I think it's so effective. It's so good for those rare hit workouts you really want to yeah. do, or like just a quick finisher or whatever. We also have a C2, um, like the, uh, what's it called? You know, it's like the, the mm -hmm. rower, but it's like the hands only. Oh yeah. One. The, er, the erg, the erg, um, the skier. It's like skier. a skier. There we go. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's like cool. basically like also horrible, but really mostly for like upper body and core. So that's fun. Um, we've got one of those, we've got a pull-up bar. I've got a bench and some kettlebells and some dumbbells. I've got like a weighted vest. I have a, um, a Bob, like a guy that you can for practicing, mm -hmm. um, boxing and stuff. Cause that's, I really like that great catharsis. Um, but I'm really looking forward to like using some of these, these things in more unconventional ways. So like, again, I've got this giant hill. I'm looking out at my front yard, which is a giant hill. So I could do some like running sprints. I could do some like walking weighted, like farmers carries, but with these heavy dumbbells, um, you know, like mm -hmm. asymmetrical carries and stuff like that. The next big purchase and really the kind of one big thing that we're adding initially is we got to get a squat rack. Like, come yeah. on, you know, it's like I the gonna, only, yeah. Yeah. It's like the one big thing that like, if you really want to have a well-rounded gym and you have the space and the ability, whatever, I'd um, argue that it's one of two. Okay. Good. I I'm, I'm excited to hear the other thing. So we're going to get a squat rack just because like, again, between Alex and I like basic, you know, some bumper plates enough to like for him to do some deadlifts and squats and for me to do some deadlifts and squats. And, um, that will, that would basically, erase any excuse I would have of like, I can't really do what I want here. Like if I'm creative, we've got enough of the stuff, the equipment, mm -hmm. I can pretty much do pretty much anything that I want to do at home. Um, so we are going to probably get one of those in the next like month, but what's the other thing? So, I mean, if you, if you told me this like three years ago, I'd be like, no cable machine cable, or machine, at least, yeah. at least a Okay. So the one thing I was going to say, I mean, it depends on how much you want to invest in this home gym, but there is, um, there's a bunch of different ones. I think rogue makes one, but the prime fitness USA, they make, um, a cable machine that is in your squat rack, right? So it's like a squat rack, a power rack, really power rack, mm -hmm. right. With handles on the top. So you do pull-ups, all that stuff. And then it has two, um, cable pulleys on the sides. And then it also comes with like a bench that you can put into the squat rack where you can do like pull downs and stuff like that. So you can sit on the bench and be locked in. So it's mm -hmm. basically like a full set, a full cable set 
and then a squat rack in itself. Um, and you know, pull up and all that stuff. Um, that mm. is like, like if you're gonna, you know, obviously it's going to be more expensive, but when you go and kind of combine the squat, like if you get a good power rack plus a cable machine, if you're going to do that, first of all, you need more, you need double the space. Second of all, it's not, it's going to come out to like probably just a, a little bit money. less than if you were to, to invest from the beginning. And yeah. so like, I, I mean, I follow a bunch of people right on like within the space and like the N1 guys and all that, like all of these people who have garage, like home gyms and they're like legit, they have this prime fitness because it's just, it's a really good investment and it's really high quality. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'll last forever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so that would be like, like, that's what I'm getting when I <laughs> get my garage gym mm -hmm. is I'm going to get one of those. Um, it's going to be a big investment from the beginning, but it's like, you you'll have it forever. Right. Yeah. And like, um, so that's and I then you too. really I, don't need to go to the gym. Like you really have yeah. everything at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And with a cable machine, like, I just think there's so much you can do with a cable machine that like you, like you can do other things, right? Like you can do band work and replacements and alternatives and all of that. But the mechanisms that the cable machine allows you to do in terms of the resistance that it gives in the full ranges of motion, like there's like there's some things that you really can't get from dumbbells and barbells mm -hmm. and bands in itself. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean that's that's would be my yeah my yeah. I mean that's like perfect world, unlimited money and yeah. space. Um, and I don't think I can, so you can check it out, but if you, want. yeah, I, I will check it out and I will imagine like getting it to Canada would be exorbitantly expensive. Oh, um, unfortunately, the thing is like shipping heavy stuff. You know what I mean? Like I remember yeah. back in the like COVID days when we were all scrambling to get like rogue everything. And there's even like rogue Canada. Yeah. I'm sure they have warehouses, but anyway, definitely send it to me. Cause listen, yeah. that's, this is, this is what I'm trying to or, do. I'm trying to have yeah. the best home gym ever. Or like just, a, they make, like, you can get a cable machine that we literally bought a cable machine for my video shoot last year. Mm -hmm. Um, so we bought it from, I think it was Titan fitness. There's a bunch of good quality cable machines that you can get that are not like super, expensive. super expensive. And I'm sure yeah. Canada like has some places. Um, yeah. so I would even just like, as you're playing the gym, be like, okay, if, do I have room for a squat rack and a cable, um, yeah. machine, there are like some cable machines that are just really small and you, all you need is a little corner actually. Yeah. And you'd yep. be good to go. Um, yep. So, yeah. Yeah. We may also, um, I may also just need to get back into cardio to run away from bobcats because we mm -hmm. have, um, check this out. This is how much nature I'm in right now. Okay. I went from city to the exact opposite. I mean, I'm really not that far from the city, but we have something called a trail cam. It's basically like an outdoor camera that like catches movement. Mm -hmm. So like you put it out in your like woods, if you live in the woods, whatever, overnight, you can see like what's wandering around your property. And in two nights, we caught vid like video or pictures of a porcupine, a skunk, a raccoon, oh and God. a bobcat, a bobcat, oh okay? Shit. A wild cat, a wild cat. So I'm like, Ooh. Magnus Wait, can't wander around my backyard. It, it was a wild cat. It was a cat and it was wild. And it may mm -hmm. or may not try to eat my kid. So... <laughs> guess what? I need to learn how to run now because maybe oh God. a wild animal is going to try to eat me. Anyway, that's what's going on over here. So that's all very exciting yeah. and good. Um, I did notice that you have a new piece of, because of course I noticed these things, a new mm. piece of jewelry. Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Talk so I finally gave in. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that it's taken me this long to get an aura ring. It is um, because I like love data. Right. And I'm yeah. such a nerd when it comes to that. Um, I guess part of me, and, and this is like part of just like all the things that I already track that I'm like, okay, like I don't need that. Cause like I track all these things. Um, uh, but obviously there's some benefits to having something that literally can just like track lots more from the yep. internal perspective, like heart rate, heart rate variability, all that stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, got one for my birthday, which is in a few days. And I've only ha been wearing it for like three days now, but it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's, they're nice it's looking. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Does it, is it annoying though? Cause you have to wear it. On, do you have to wear it on the pointer finger? So it's they better, say, right? they say that that's where yeah. the, and this is some tips. If anybody's looking to get an aura ring, be aware of this. Yeah. They yeah. say that the best place to wear it is on your dominant hand 
uh, pointer finger, but I've also heard people who wear it on their middle finger, um, which yeah. I thought about doing that, but cause I was like, I'm not going to want to wear it on my pointer finger, but now even just after three days, I'm like so used to it that I don't even really notice it anymore. Um, yeah. but the sizing is, and we have to be careful about this because I've had some friends who've gotten it and they've had to send it back after like 30 days because they size too small. Mm. Um, the, I got a size 10 and when I'm like, when my finger is like kind of normal, whatever, I don't know, mm. whatever normal is the, the size 10, like I can take it right off. But if mm. I have any type of swelling, like any, yeah. any type of swelling, which happens like when I wake up in the morning, um, for most people, they'll have like their hands will swell a little bit during the day. Like that's normal. Yeah. Like it's, it's on there. Right. Yeah. So I would definitely size up, um, or just get one of the sizer things and make sure. Cause it's totally different than like your normal ring size and yeah. it can actually hurt. Like Alex got hers and she like wakes mm -hmm. up and like her, she has like, uh, blood, like blood flow yes. restriction in her finger. Um, so yeah, okay. but yeah. It's cool. And I know that these things take like a bunch of time to like calibrate and like understand, but like, has it yeah. told you anything yet? That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, so I want to, the first thing I wanted to do is kind of compare it to like my steps that my Apple watch says, and it's actually, yeah. it's pretty similar. It's not exact, but it's actually pretty similar. Um, some people have said that it's completely different, um, in terms of like their Apple watch showing that their steps are like a thousand less or than their aura ring, um, mm. which kind of makes sense. Like if you're moving, but if I don't know, um, but for me, the last three days, they've been like only like a hundred steps different. Um, which is interesting. And then, mm -hmm. or not, maybe not so interesting. And then like sleep scores, right. It tells you like your, your sleep score and like your deep sleep, your REM sleep, obviously heart rate variability. It takes time for that. Like, yeah. cause that's like more consistent. Um, and then it'll kind of tell you like your body temperature and your waking body temperature, which is cool to use as like a, um, like a fertility metric or, you know, tracking your cycle, which I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't really care about fertility right now, but maybe I will in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometime in the future. Um, mm -hmm. but that's going to be cycle. another episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been cool. Um, it's, it's really just kind of like a nice to have, um, is right it now. telling you anything about your sleep that you didn't know? Cause this is the thing that always like worries me. Like, cause I'm not, you know, I, I actually am doing quite well right now, but historically I have not been the best sleeper. And I always worried, I had like a whoop for a while or whatever. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I always, I worry that like, it'll tell me something bad and that'll like make me spiral even worse and sleep even worse. Like, is it telling you something? That's why I like, did oh, I one of the reasons I didn't want to get yeah. it at first. Cause yeah. I was like, I don't want that to dictate, but, um, I mean, I've only been wearing it for three days yeah. and I've actually had really good sleep the last three nights. So Great. ask me that next time and I'll let yeah. you know, um, when I've had yeah. some, some off sleep. Um, yeah. but I do have another, um, and I want to talk about one other thing after we talk about this, that I've been researching re Tracking? recently okay. because, uh, it's a, it's different, um, different subject. But yeah, I've left some space on my uh, other mm -hmm. non-dominant ring finger uh, mm -hmm. for some uh, some pretty jewelry. Other yeah. jewelry. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, why don't we talk yeah. about that? Yeah, I realized that I am not good enough at self-promotion for somebody whose businesses are all completely online. Cause I'm like, Hmm, I have a podcast. I have not really talked about this new business that I launched. So guess what? Buckle in listeners. I'm going to talk about it for a minute because Buckle this is in. how I can, Buckle this up. is how I can, this is how I can promote my life. But that's one of the things that I've been, I've been doing, you know, in the last couple of months along with this move is launching a jewelry company. And I, I really don't actually want to get like too deep into it right now. Cause it could be its whole, its whole own podcast. And if you guys like write in and say like, Hey, I'm like interested in like the business side of it or how you decided to like launch a different company or something. I'd love to talk about it, but I just like, I don't really think this is the space to get like deep into it. But ultimately one of my other passions, because we all do surprisingly have interests outside of working out sometimes. And one of my passions has always been jewelry. Like even from like a little kid, I just, I find it interesting. Like I would look at like what jewelry people were wearing. And like, I remember my grandmother having all this like big extravagant jewelry. And I loved what my mother wore. And I just thought it was beautiful and interesting. And I, as I grew up, I thought it was a really cool way to like express your style and fashion. I think it's beautiful. And I, I just, whatever, I've always been into it. And for a while, when I lived in New York, I took a couple like metal working metal smithing classes to learn how you make jewelry from scratch, which gave me a much better appreciation for like the art and craft of it. And 
I think that a lot of us, I'm speaking for myself, but I think a lot of people would probably relate to this, that life moves so quickly and we're so used to things being immediate and quick and fast. And whether it's fast fashion or fast food or whatever, it's just kind of cool to like dive into a hobby that like just forces you to slow down and like stuff takes time and can't be done quickly. And for me to like learn how to make some of the jewelry that I'm going to be making and the process of just kind of developing and designing things and then putting it together. And I'm going to be taking some more classes with a local um, female metalsmith who's amazing, who like makes this beautiful jewelry from scratch. It's, it's a really, really cool process. It's just fascinating to me. So anyway, it started out of this idea that I wanted to create this beautiful barbell jewelry for my fellow mm-hmm. uh, fit chicks or men, whatever. This isn't actually gender jewelry. I just feel like I mostly have women following me. But um, so I designed with this company in Toronto, this beautiful gold barbells that I have earrings and necklaces and they don't exist really anywhere else. So that was kind of cool. I figured I've got a niche there. Like if you are somebody who likes to work out and you like jewelry and maybe you want to have barbell jewelry, then guess what? You come to me because I don't think there's many other people doing it. So anyway, so I, you know, developed this, this brand and created this thing and launched it at the same time as I was moving. It was a whole thing. Um, but I'm really excited to like learn more and grow it and like really kind of explore that more kind of creative side because for a very long time, um, my whole life, my whole professional life has been fitness stuff, which is great and food and, you know, writing the cookbooks and stuff, but it's all been like this one area of my life and I'm interested in other things. And so I wanted to just sort of branch out and kind of challenge myself and see sort of what comes of it. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple pieces I've got, I'm working on, um, some new stuff for, uh, August because the company it's, it's inspired by my son who was born in August. And so I'm designing some pieces for people with August birthdays with the August birthstone, which is going to be really beautiful. Um, But anyway, so it's called August Sun, august-sun.com, and maybe a future podcast episode will be sponsored. Yes, Sun, S-O-N, as in, yes, beautiful little play on words there, because he is my little (laughs) August Sun, and it's, I want people to feel warm and sunny and happy when they buy the beautiful jewelry that I'm making, so it's been cool. Like I've, I've had some great feedback so far. I've had some people buy some pieces and share some stuff with me. And it's been, it's just been really fun. Like, I think, you know, as being an entrepreneur, like it is always very cool when you, you put yourself out there and you create something that did not exist before you. And it came only out of your brain. And you just hope that other people, whether it's a program or a book or whatever it is that we're doing, and you hope that other people will find value in it or find joy or education or pleasure or whatever in what you do. And when some people do, it's very, it's very validating. It's very encouraging. So, um, we'll see how it grows, but yeah, you're, you, you gotta get that, get that ring size, baby. So I know. Get some, I know. I gotta put my order in soon. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, so that's it's August. Amazing Sun. though. So excited. Thank you. you. Keep you posted. I'm going to try to just get, I think one of my next things, I mean, again, business wise, but I'm like, I know some very like high profile fit women who should probably be wearing this stuff. I feel like that's the way of marketing these days. Like, does it even matter if you like put anything in a magazine? Do people read magazines? Like what kind of, how do people market anymore? Is it all just like influencers? Is that the, you know, God, TikTok even worse. (laughs) You saw, did you see my failed TikTok? recipe the other day, my clementine no, ice cream. but I need to go. Oh, why was that failed? Well, it, w- it wasn't so much a fail. It was just like, you know, anything that seems like too good to be true. Like you see like a makeup tutorial where it's like, Hey, I went from like looking like me to looking like, I don't know, Angelina yeah. Jolie with this one bronzer stick. And you're like, I call BS on this. And anyway, yeah. it was this clementine ice cream. You just freeze some clementines and put it in your blender. And it's like creamy and delicious and like a sorbet. And I'm like, but is it though? It so kind of was just you put in your blender clementines. though, not the ninja creamy. No, but Vitamix, Vitamix. I know, but do you think I could put frozen fruit in the ninja creamy? So this is how you do it. And I was just going to tell you this. I made a sorbet, two sorbets last week and okay. it's literally game changing. I haven't posted it really yet. I posted a little bit, but I'll, okay. this will be exclusive to our, our listeners. Oh, exclusive but all, drop, you guys. Do, all you do is take, um, so I used frozen fruit that I defrosted, but you can use fresh fruit. And so for, what I did is 300 grams 
All right. Write this down if you want 300 grams of fruit. So either strawberries, berries, clementines, bananas, any fruit that you think, I don't know about apples. You probably could try apples, but those are like harder. So any kind of like fruit that gets soft. Um, so I just took 300 grams, put it right in the Ninja, right in the mm -hmm. container. Mm -hmm. Um, of frozen strawberries, let it sit on my counter for like an hour and like or two hours and just completely defrost so that it melted and was like kind of mushy, or you could just use fresh strawberries, whatever. But then it's um, not frozen anymore. Listen, listen. Okay, fine. So 300 grams, then you put 120, 130 milliliters of water, right? That's it. Maybe a dash of sweetener. If you, if the fruit is like tart, like, so maybe if you're using like a a blackberry or raspberry is yeah. a little bit more tart than like a strawberry dash of sweetener. And I use like a immersion blender and just put it in there, blend it up till it's all blended together. Or you could just do this, put that, put in your blender and then pour it into the container, freeze it overnight, just like you would do a normal creamy mm -hmm. and then put it hit sorbet one spin did it for me, but you can do two spins. If you want like a respin it's literally sorbet and it was a hundred or like 98 calories for the strawberry one, 300 fruit. grams of strawberries. Yeah. It was literally 300 grams of strawberries. Um, and then I did it again with mixed fruit. So I had mixed frozen fruit. Um, with that one, it was a little bit different because it had some seeds in it, like the blackberries and the um, yeah. raspberries had seeds. So all I did was I let it melt down and then I pureed it and I just uh, put it through like a sieve to get the seeds out because yeah. I didn't really feel like I wanted to yeah. be eating the crunchiness. Seeds, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's all it is. And it's sorbet. Like it was legit the same consistency of sorbet that I would get in a grocery store and clementines. I haven't done the clementine yet, but I've seen people do it. And it's the same thing. It's just 300. You could do 300 grams of clementines, blend it up with 130 grams of water, dash of sweetener, put it in the thing, freeze it. You got clementine sorbet. Okay. I want to do this with like full, like lemon or lime. Cause like I'm a real or grapefruit. Cause I'm a real like yeah. citrus. Oh, great. Like, I don't yeah. So good. But I think, okay. So first of all, yes, that's my bad for not just immediately going ninja creamy, but in my defense, in my defense, first of all, the stupid video said, this is what happens. And I listened. Also, I did just spend money on a Vitamix. Like I finally bought a Vitamix because I had like a 10 year old blender that literally was mm -hmm. like, it smelled like burning every time I turned it on. And I was like, I need to stop this. Like I need to go get yeah. a proper blender. And I was like, this is going to be like high powered and good and effective. And it was not. So Okay. Oh. I'm going to do that. That's going to be, wait, I mean, Vitamix it, it was worked. Oh, no, no. I mean, it worked, but like it basically, it just didn't, I feel like, again, a lot of times some of these like Instagram, TikTok, the viral trends, it's like, they make it look a lot easier and simpler and like a little bit more staged than it actually is. Like it, it technically worked, but like, I wouldn't do it again. Whereas mm -hmm. the way you did it, like the Ninja Creamy, which took a couple more steps and a couple, a bit more yeah. time, but like, it's still simple. That turned into like an actual dessert that you'd want to eat again. And it was good. So like, it was just sort of like, a, again, a learning experience of like, if something says it's like one ingredient and one second and the easiest thing in the world, like probably it's not going to yeah. be as good as they're making it seem like it is. But anyway, yeah. But yeah, this is try that. Because... And you could even do like an orange creamsicle instead of using water, you could yeah. use a little bit of milk mm -hmm. um, or vanilla so protein powder or vanilla protein. I haven't done the clementine one yet. So like, that'll be your experiment. Um, okay. I'm curious if you will have to like, cause sometimes the clementines have like that stringy stuff. I'm curious That's if you're going to have problem. to just, if you just put it through the strainer though, right into the, the yeah. container, like it takes yeah. like three yeah. extra minutes to strain it. Um, but yeah. if you don't want to do that, just do strawberries or blueberries or banana. Um, I really like the idea easy. of a blackberry one too. Cause I like tart stuff yeah. like grapefruit, blackberry. Yeah. I want to see if I can find a recipe for like a key lime or something yeah. because that's, that's where I want to go. Now that it's summer, I just gave you the recipe. No, but lime though. Like I can't just, yeah, do, just do limes. Like that'll be you tart could. as hell. You put a little bit of sweetener in it. I put some lemon juice in the, the mixed berry sorbet one that I did to make it a little bit tarter. Um, okay. you could do that too. Add a little bit of lemon juice when you do like the respin, right. Instead yeah. of doing like a milk or water, you just do a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice to make those yeah. tartar. But yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, stay tuned. This is, this yeah. has been an episode of muscle ice cream science. For well, women. I have one more thing I want to talk about. And we still have to talk about our sponsors and then we can get, oh, out of yeah. Here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, just a quick update on like what I've been doing since it's been like a month, uh, it's been, a I know 
a while. And I mean, I have, this is not very new. Cause I've been, I think I've been really kind of diving into this for probably the last like three months, actually. I just haven't really voiced it. Um, but so I, I feel like I go through stages like over the years, like I'll go through like a year long stage where I get super into, for example, I th- like two years ago, it was biomechanics, like of exercise, yeah. right? Like going deep into that and just like nerding out and learning every little thing that I could about like the exercise side of things. Obviously I did that for keto and metabolic flexibility and, and whatnot. Um, but this year I did, I went through a period of like gut health stuff, right. Cause I was doing a lot of that stuff myself. So I went through a deep dive into that. Um, but the last few months, and I guess more so like this past month, two months, I have dove really deep into hormone replacement therapy, HRT. Um, and the reason for this is because I have a lot of women in my flex fam who are in perimenopause, menopause, or even postmenopausal. Cause it's a, you know, there's an age or age group. Um, and I have quite a few who are on hormone replacement therapy Mm -hmm. and there there's something that like popped up a few months ago. Um, someone had some questions. And so I started doing some research and I was like, Oh my gosh, like there is so much misinformation about HRT that is like mind blowing. And what's really Mm -hmm. funny is that last week, I don't know if you saw this, but last week it was, there was a segment on the today show that came out two days after I posted an article in my flex fam about why people are, have so much misinformation on hormone replacement therapy. And it all kind of stems out of the, which I'm sure you've heard of this before the WHI, the women's health initiative study, um, that was stopped in 2002 because of misled, uh, results that were kind of like leaked to the media. And then it like Mm -hmm. went down this whole thing. And I think this would be great to have like a whole episode on this because I can kind of dive into that study and like how, like all of the just mind blowing things that came out of that and like literally changed honestly, like women's health from 2002 to like now where we're finally understanding like, Oh wait, hormone replacement therapy can actually be very, very beneficial if you know how to do it what, like if you're working with a skilled practitioner who, who knows what the heck they're doing. Um, and if you have proper hormones that you're taking, like bioidentical hormone replacement Mm -hmm. therapy versus the synthetic, there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about all that because I've been like literally going down the rabbit hole and it's just so cool. Cause I'm like, this is stuff that every single woman should know about because as, as you age, like we, we can start perimenopause as early as 35. Right. Mm -hmm. And the average age of menopause is 51 average. Right. And so that whole period before that is a period where your hormones are declining. And there is like actually so much research on how hormone replacement therapy can be so beneficial. If you're using bioidentical hormones, you're doing it in the proper way to helping, not just with symptoms that come from perimenopause and menopause, but also with your health, like internal health, organ health, bone health, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I've just like gone, kind of went down the rabbit hole, been reading like tons of books and research and it's just like, so eye opening. And yeah, so that's like, as you can tell, I'm super excited about it. Cause I'm like, Holy crap, this is a whole other area of like nerd nerding out on something. And I think it's going to kind of take me like 2023 into 2024 is going to be the, the year of like hormones and diving into HRT and stuff like that. Um, and I think, especially because we have a lot of females who listen to this and it's not just females, like males too, their hormones Mm -hmm. decline, testosterone, things like that, getting Mm -hmm. the right, getting the correct information and just, you know, being able to be knowledgeable because you don't know what you don't know. Right. Yep. So if you're knowledgeable on it and if you get it from a source that is credible, then there's so much, there's so much out there that like you could learn about. So yeah, that's what I think. I love this. And it's so important <laughs> because that's probably like that top, that general topic, like basically hormones, how to be fit when you're in menopause, what's perimenopause all about? What do I do? I'm this age. That is like literally the most common, like group of subject matter that we get asked about because it, again, it's incredibly complex. No one knows anything about it. And in classic fashion, you know, men have 
testosterone decline as they get older and are having erection issues. And so billions of dollars get put into research and pills and women are like, Hey, we're struggling over there. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, that's what happens. Cause you're a woman and you're getting older. So just go off with yourself and figure it out. Like that's yeah. just the classic way that we've always treated women's issues and that's unacceptable. And I think people are starting to finally like get on board with that. So that's yeah. very exciting. We should definitely do like just a whole episode about it. Yeah. Um, and that's something that we should be working on maybe for like potential future workshops and stuff too, because it's something again, that we are all going to be lucky to encounter if we get to age and experience perimenopause and menopause and all of those things. So let's figure out ways to like optimize and crush it and maybe be proactive instead of like Mm -hmm. what we always tell women, which is like, yeah, this is what you get. Oh, you want to have a baby? This is, you're going to feel like crap. Oh, you're postpartum. This is what your life is. Oh, you're in menopause. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You're going to feel like shit for the rest of your life. No, thanks. We're not, (laughs) we're not putting up with that. So and That's it's just amazing. So, yeah. And it's just so mind blowing, like all the stuff that I I've learned just in the last few months of diving into this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like people, like women are not, they're not informed. And yeah, mm-hmm. it's just like, I, even myself, I was like, oh, HRT, like that's not natural. That's not something like just from what I knew. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like this is completely opposite of what I thought. And there's so much good that can come out of it. If again, if you know, like if you're educated on it, just like everything Mm -hmm. else. So yeah, I'm excited to get into that in future episodes. And if anybody listening, um, wants to share or let us, you know, ask questions, um, you can email us at muscle science for the number four women at gmail.com. We love to talk about your questions and yeah. Yes, please do that. Please ask us your like specific questions. The more questions you give us, the better we can kind of provide the information that you want. Mm -hmm. Um, That's exciting. I'm super into that. Uh, And we should also say thank you to our sponsors who are letting us continue to do this. So we've got Bubs. Bubs is still crushing it and giving us so much coffee, which makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. Did you get your recent package with like ground coffee? So now you don't even have to grind your coffee. It's already ground for you. You just put that baby right in whatever <laughs> way you're making coffee. It's been really good for my iced coffee too. Cause at the end of the day, I'm not going to probably take the time to grind it. That's Alex's job. So it's already ground. <laughs> Get to make my iced coffee. It's delicious. They've got coffee. They've got creamer. They've got collagen. They have MCT. If you're into that, they actually have some new, um, hydration mm-hmm. stuff, some like electrolyte hydration, mm-hmm. which we can talk about another time, maybe after you've had some time to try it. Um, but these guys are killing it as always. They are so supportive of w- what we do. And not only that, they also give 10% of their, um, profit to veteran supporting charities, which is incredibly, mm-hmm. um, generous and unique in the industry. So go support them. Um, it's bubsnaturals.com and the code is MSW 20. You get 20% off anything you buy. And we are actually going to be creating some like cool packages and special offers with them because we talked offline about, um, sort of renewing our partnership and how to like make this more cool because anybody who listens to a podcast knows like they've got sponsors and they give a discount code. We want to do more. So they're going to be doing some like really special, like um, giving free product with purchase. We're going to be doing some partnerships with other companies. Like it's going to be very cool. We're going to do a lot with them. So, um, thank you to bubs and yep. And we've also got active stacks who is basically just keeping our, um, protein ice cream habits (laughs) alive and well, um, still the best chocolate protein powder I've ever tried. It's just like, what else do you need to know? I did a quick new, quick new addition to a recipe. Okay. I don't know if you saw. Um, I think I just saw today Oreo. Yeah, Oreo, and oh it's black. <laughs> have you ever have you ever tried black cocoa black powder? Cocoa. Yes. Okay. I okay. haven't tried it because it's so expensive, but I really want to. So on is Amazon, it worth it? the yeah. So what I did is I do active sacks chocolate. Um, I did about fifteen grams, fifteen to twenty grams, depending on how much protein I want. Um, and then I'll do like five to seven grams of black cocoa powder and it turns it like legit black, but it tastes like Oreos. And then obviously Love. put in some Oreo, like mini Oreos, like the mini ones, mm-hmm. you put them in mm-hmm. the middle once it's done as a mix in and it's like Oreo protein ice cream. Don't. I love this for you. I love that you put something like fully unhealthy in your ice cream because 
listen, I love a healthy protein ice cream, but like sometimes you just got to put some Oreos in it. Okay. Yeah. And I just, and, I, I you really know, sometimes I don't put the Oreos in it and it still tastes like Oreo. Yeah. Like it depends, you know, it depends how, how crazy I want to get. Um, yeah. obviously the Oreos make it like legit, but even without it, the plaque cocoa powder, plus the chocolate active stacks, like it tastes like you're eating or Oreos, like it's freaking amazing. And I'm just mind blown all like just mind blown. You had me at, at Oreos. Um, <laughs> my, my laptop's going to die. So we got to cut this, but, uh, okay. MSW 10 is that discount code. So activestacks.com. Um, it's just the best protein powder like you can get. So just, if you're going to fill your pantry with some protein powder to like have it as a supplement to make some ice cream, like it's best tasting, it's incredible ingredients. You can't go wrong. So activestacks.com. It's been great chatting. See you next time. You're you're the best. You're the best. Bye. You're the best. Signing off. Don't be stupid. Don't do stupid you're shit. You're the best. Don't do stupid shit. Bye.